it was scary. Um, somebody's dogs clearly got out and were loose running in a pack and I feel badly for the victim and his dog. Um, I've lived in this neighborhood for about two and a half years and it's the first time I've seen anything like that. As Christmas lights twinkle into the night, by day, many of you are rushing to get those last minute gifts. I like to do my shopping local, uh, just because I feel a little bit more safe. Etsy, just for some, um, some old vintage things, some items that were like craft made. I got a couple of things that were over in the mercado. Try to shop local as much as we can, but it just seems kind of the way of the world these days. It's easier to just do your stuff online and get it sent to you. Many of you prefer the convenience of online shopping. Do you feel safe shopping online? Uh, you know, as the, as the years go by, it seems a little crazier each and every year. I did. I like, I totally did. Should I not feel safe though? The Better Business Bureau is warning you to beware of items like these. Nintendo Switch, Apple Watches, Beats, AirPods, Nikes, phones, name brand purses, and even masks. They look real, but it's during the holidays that scammers pull out the knockoffs. We all want a great deal and a bargain. Uh, but at what price? At what sacrifice? Are we going down a shady website? BBB's regional director, Jason Mesa, says if the deal sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Some of you already experiencing it. In just the last couple of years, I've had to change my, my Discover card three times um, because of fraudulent charges. The BBB says you have to be wary of how you pay. If the website or alleged retailer is asking you to pay with Zelle, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, it should be a huge red flag. We end up, you know, duped and it could take months, even years to clean up ID theft or fraud and, and to get your money back. But don't take any shortcuts. And that's saying you even get the product you were hoping to put under your Christmas tree. Now, if you don't want to end up empty handed or even worse with a hole in your wallet, there's a few tips and tricks the BBB is suggesting to make sure you have a safe and happy holiday shopping. Now we have those up on your screen. Take a look. That includes visiting a reputable site, using a credit card to make sure you can dispute fraudulent charges and looking for a physical dress on that website, a contact number, something, and even checking for misspellings, making sure that that website actually passes that quick sniff test to make sure you're shopping safely. Of course, these are just a, a few of those safety tips. We are expecting to see this rate increase as we get closer and closer and more discussion has been happening. You know, over the past few years, we've been anticipating a rate increase with CPS Energy, but with what happened during the February winter storm, it's looking more and more likely that this increase will actually pass. Now, if you're a CPS Energy customer, you likely received robocalls, calls, text messages like this one, or emails looking for your input when it comes to a uh, rate increase. I've sent a request to CPS Energy to see how many people have responded so far. I'm still waiting to hear back. The rate increase will be at 3.85%. And according to CPS Energy, for a customer who has a bill that's about $150 a month, that bill will go up by $5 a month or $60 for the year. The utility says that this rate increase is necessary to make sure our infrastructure is resilient for extreme weather like we saw in February and also to get new technologies to replace current platforms that are now obsolete and to deal with the growth of the San Antonio area as well as to hire and retain employees. CPS Energy is going to be making a presentation about this public input they've received at, in front of uh, City Council today at 2 p.m. Amy Crum, she is an instructional specialist for the gifted and talented uh, within the SAISD. Basically, uh, Tammy, you teach all the smart kids. Uh, <laughs> there at uh, San Antonio Independent School District. Uh, let's start with this, so make sure that everybody understands. Tell me about the film festival itself. Um, what's it about? What are we looking for here? So, uh, children are, in, are encouraged to read a 90 second, uh, I'm sorry, to read a Newbery Award winning or honor book, and then turn that book into um, a 90 second movie, basically retelling the entire story of that book, but in 90 seconds, and usually with some sort of twist. So for example, um, Charlotte's Web might be done in the style of a horror film or in the style of a superhero or Ramona and her father might be done in the style of James Bond. Oh, very, very cool. So I didn't know this until recently, but 
uh, and forgive the ignorance, but Newberry is a classification or, or, or how, what, is, what is considered to be a Newberry book? Um, a Newberry is an award that's given to authors for their contribution to children's literature, and it's been around since the, the 20s. Um, and the, so the creator and author, who's also an author, James Kennedy, thought this would be a good way to encourage students or children to read quality literature. Okay, you said earlier, you told me off camera, like your, your, one of your duties, probably the millions of duties that you have, um, is you help students get involved in this festival. You have been uh, since the very beginning. How do you, how, what are the ages of the kids you work with and how do you get someone like that started? So I, I work with students from kinder through, typically kinder through fifth grade this year. Um, I have worked with a little bit of older kids in the past, but this year my, all of my students are in elementary. Um, as young as, you know, like I said, kinder, first grade, usually it's the first and second grade is, is, the, is the lowest grade level that I go. And I just get them interested. They pick the book and then we um, talk about how, they, how they're going to turn that into that 90 second movie. And they're pretty good, yes, with the technology? Yeah, yeah. They need some guidance. Of course, the younger ones are going to need some guidance, but the kids are, you know, experts with technology. <laughs> we have, uh, we had a graphic up there. Uh, there is a deadline uh, to submit your film, um, which I believe is February 25th. Um, is there a place where uh, all the information is kind of condensed? And um, if I'm interested or I want to get my child involved in this, where we can go? Yes, the bibliotech page has all of the information and everything that you'll need for the, to know more about the contest, to submit your film, resources, all of that is on that page. Uh, Ma'am, thank you so much, Tammy. Thank you so much for, for what you do for our kids, raising our kids uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and getting them involved in the creativity and turning them uh, what's up here into something that we can, uh, we can all experience and enjoy. So thank you so much for doing that. And we have set up a link on our website as well where you can find out all that information, news4sa.com.